Hey team, this is Luke with Practical Machinist. Welcome back for another episode of The Lathe Lab. Before we begin, I wanna ask you a favor. Smash that like button and subscribe. But I'm not gonna say that. On The Practical Machinist channel, please subscribe. Find us on YouTube and Instagram, follow and sub. Second thing on this video, leave a like and leave a comment and share it if you can. It helps a lot and we're really trying to get our message out there. Now let's begin. In the first few episodes of the Lathe Lab, what we covered was machining, basic, turning, drilling, boring. Now we're gonna cover something that I really enjoy teaching and I love doing myself. CNC lathe programming. Before we get into the whole CAD CAM aspect of it, we're gonna go over longhand programming. Paper, pencil, and calculator. The reason I like to do it this way before just diving into CAD CAM, it really helps to give programmers a fundamental basis and a, a concrete foundation for what they're doing. Whether or not you're at the control programming or if you're writing a program on a piece of paper or on your desktop and then inputting it in or whatever it might be, it's important to know the functions of the machine. I'm sorry, the functions of the program. What the codes are that are being pumped out from CAD CAM. Furthermore, what happens if there's some sort of zombie apocalypse and your CAD CAM goes down? You're gonna have to write the program longhand. That's always my perspective. Worst case scenario. It's important for someone to know how to write a program longhand. And there might be people that say, no, it's not important with CAD CAM. And that's actually quite valid. CAD CAM is so advanced now, you really don't have to. But for the people that I train at the college where I teach, and also the people I train in my workplace, I like to give that a foundation. It doesn't take very much time and it can be a huge help in the future. So one of the first things that we're gonna cover now, and it might be considered redundant, perhaps it is because everyone who's watching this is super intelligent and awesome, but I wanna go over it anyhow. We're gonna just cover a real quick aspect of the machine. Here's our turret. Your physical tool position is gonna be called in your program, that's gonna index it to the physical tool position. That's the first um, two numbers of your T02 or T04 or T05. Keep that in mind for later on in the video. Physical tool position is where it indexes on the turret. This is our main spindle, can't really see it that well. Main spindle, this is the sub. In this video and the next, we're not gonna cover transfers yet, but we are going to get there. What I want you guys to know for the first video here is our direction is Z. Z minus is going into your main spindle. That's the direction, Z minus. Z positive is going away from the spindle. Now here's your turret, it moves in X and Y, but same thing, we're not gonna cover that Y yet. But your X negative is towards your center line. The center line of your spindles is your X zero. X positive moves up and away from it. Here's your control where if you're gonna be doing long handling program, you'd go to say edit, program, write it in, blah, 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 blah. So you got your control, you got your turret, you got your, sp you got your main spindle. The main spindle we command with an S code, S1000, S500, and it's also commanded with a G96 or G97. And we're gonna cover all that, the G96, G97S, right now. We're gonna be going over some G and M codes specifically. So G and M code, that's what we're going over. When we talk about CNC programming, there's several different methods. The method that I employ and that we will continue going over in this series on the Lathe Lab is G and M code. I know specifically what G and M code is, what it does. If you were to ask me, hey, can you give me a definition of G and M code? Uh, I might struggle. So I asked my assistant, AI, what it was. In the context of GNM code, which is used in CNC, computer numeric control programming, G stands for geometry. G codes are commands that primarily control the movement and positioning of the machine tool. They dictate how and where the tool should move to create the desired shape or part, such as moving in a straight line, moving in an arc, or setting your coordinate systems. For example, 
G00 instructs a rapid move to a position, while G01 specifies a linear move at a controlled feed rate. M in the GNM stands for miscellaneous or sometimes interpreted as machine functions. M codes control auxiliary or non-movement operations of the CNC machine, such as turning the spindle on and off, activating coolant, or stopping the program. For example, M03 starts the spindle rotating clockwise, and M00 pauses the program. Together, G and M codes form the foundation of CNC programming, working in tandem to guide the machine's actions and produce precise parts. So, that is a great example, or a great definition of G and M code. So like I said, G is like geometry, M is like machine functions. So, one, and one of the things that we didn't talk about there was your T command, which is also how you call up a tool in G and M code. For instance, T0202, end the block. The first T02 is the physical tool itself on the actual turret. The last two digits are your associated offset in your program. So you could have T0202, meaning physical tool 2, offset 2, or wonderful eraser, you could say T0232, which be physical tool 2, offset 32. When you're programming G and M code, you have to make sure to specify the tool or it's not going to know where it goes. This is after everything is touched off and getting ready to um, set up the machine. Furthermore, there's a few other codes that you're going to want to know as you're beginning your journey as a C and C programmer. Some main G codes. Like I said in the example, G00 is rapid. It's a rapid move that you would move into what I call your approach. Before you're beginning to cut, where are you going to wrap it to? After you wrap it, most likely you're going to do a G1, which is a feed move. Feed is how many thousands per revolution that you're going to move. As long as you're in, this is a good segue, into G99. G99 is a code that's going to specify your feed rate is in inches per revolution, as opposed to G98 is inches per minute, IPM. When you're on a lathe, you can move in inches per minute if you're doing a, uh, maybe using live tooling or something of that, of that nature. So G0, G99, G98, G00, G01. So G01, we're going to talk about that for a minute. You would say G01, which is a feed move or linear interpolation specifically, and you would have your position in either X or Z followed by an F. And the F is designated, if you're in G99, for example, 002, meaning you're going to move two thousandths per revolution. Every time your bar makes one full revolution, your tool is going to move two thousandths. It's a very slow feed, but it's just an example. Another move that you would have that's a G code could be a G02 or a G03. That's what we call circular interpolation or moving in a radius or an arc, which we will cover further on in the programming series as we continue. Another G code that, that is very important, two of them in fact, would be G97 and G96. G97 is constant RPM. You're going to set G97 with an S code, say S2000. That means that your G97, 2000 RPM, constant RPM of 2000. G96 I like to use more frequently when I'm turning, turning, boring, especially cutting off. G96 you would set say 300. G96 is constant surface footage per minute, constant SFM. You would get that SFM for that particular tool from your tool manufacturer. Or if you got a lot of time in a machine shop, you probably know what you would run, say for instance, stainless on a cutoff. G96 is SFM, constant SFM. Meaning, 
you're dependent on the size of your bar, your RPM is going to change to maintain your 300 surface feet or whatever that S value is that you would put. So yeah, those are some common G codes. G00, rapid, G01, G02, G03, G99, G98, G97, G96. Now some M codes that you would use. M01 is optional stop. That's something you would put in a program when you wanted the machine to stop at a certain point. There's an optional stop button on your control. M00 is to pause the program. You don't need to have optional stop. You put an M00. When it hits that M00, the machine is going to stop and pause until you hit start and run again. M03 is spindle clockwise or top coming. M04 is the top of the spindle away from you or counterclockwise. M05 is spindle stop. Furthermore, there's M08, which would turn your coolant on. M09, which would turn your coolant off. So where the G is more positional or an action of the machine, the M is a machine function. Turn your spindle on, turn it off, turn your coolant on, turn it off. These are some basic M codes, but one, one caveat to this is different machines, like for instance, a Sugami Swiss machine is going to have certain M codes for like high pressure coolant or part ejector or uh, part conveyor that isn't going to be on this generic list. This list of the G and M codes that we're going over in this video is a crash course. So as we proceed further in this programming series in the lathe lab, you're going to have a basis of what M codes are, what G codes are, what is a T code, or what, you know, when you say T0222, what does it mean? If you're calling up an S code, if you see an S, what does it mean? Your RPM or your spindle command. This is an introduction to that. Next le lesson in the lathe lab, we are going to be going over canned Cycles. It's going to be a good start for us to go over canned cycles. What are canned cycles? Canned cycles are cycles that you basically take a whole long list of a code that would be longhand writing and you're going to can it all into one little package. And that one little package is going to give loads of different commands on one line or several lines that is going to condense your code down. We're going to start with canned cycles and then uh, the next time we go, we're at the next episode of the lathe lab we're actually going to write a, a quick simple program calling up a tool calling up our approach calling up our uh, linear interpolation our feed move in g1 and then we're going to hop into can cycles so in conclusion today we went over the basic um, layout of the machine where you're at in z where you're at in x we went over an introduction of g and m codes what is wh what are some popular g and m codes that you should know no one expects anyone to memorize all of them, but it's important to understand what G codes do, what M codes do. Again, what is T, what is S, what is F? To prepare for the next lesson, it would be a good idea, or to prepare for your shop, it would be a good idea to get a G and M code list. To have it, put it in your toolbox, put it in your pocket, keep it a, a screenshot on your phone, so you can reference G and M codes as you're beginning your journey into programming. So I hope you guys liked the episode. Like, follow, subscribe, leave a message. You can find me, Luke, at Crusader Machining on YouTube, at Crusader Machining on Instagram, a bunch of different socials. And of course, follow Practical Machinists. Check it out, us out on Instagram. Watch all the other videos we got. These next few lessons in the Lathe Lab, we're going to be going over programming. Don't miss out. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.